Okay, I want to uh, create a video to show you how to do the web page. First thing I want to do is open Notepad. I'm going to use Notepad to make the web page because I know everybody has that. So I'm just going to go down to the Start button here and start typing Note. And you should see this Notepad um, open up right here. I mean, Notepad++ is great, but everybody may not have that. So I'm going to do Notepad. I'm going to bring that down into the window here. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is open up um, our course web page. Let me shrink this down a little bit. I know that blew up real quick. And what if you go down to the here, the winter session, and then you go down to the um, to the web page right here. And I'm going to click on here's a web page. I'm going to make something like this one right here. Okay, for this video, but um, here's some notes here on getting started, how to make the initial web page. I'm going to do all this stuff right here. Uh, here's the web page's actual assignment. Um, this is where I'm going to recommend you start at. What I'm going to do is for, is um, copy this. Well, first of all, what you need to do is make a web page. That's going to have two pages at least. You might want to make more. And then we're going to have a title, some hyperlinks, an email link to other page, to, to the other page that you're going to make, um, some sort of bulleted list, some sort of background color or pattern, and a link between the two pages, back and forth between the two pages. So the first page goes to the second. Then I'd like to make a hyperlink from the second page back to the first page. To turn it in, you need to email me the URL because there's really nothing to put in detail because I can't see that it works unless you email me the URL. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to just, I went to the web page assignment, like I said, I'm going to copy this. Right click, copy. I'm going to slide this off. Here's my notepad. I'm simply going to right click and paste that in there. So what this is. Um, hopefully you can see this. I'll make this font a little bit bigger. It doesn't really matter your font size. Okay, I pause for a moment and for that for Notepad to catch up and load up. So what we have here, this is um, HTML code. You'll notice there's all these angle brackets. And every HTML page should start with this doc type that tells the browser what this document is. And then this is actually the opening tag. Um, the default language is English, so if you don't have this, it would still work okay for you. And then we have the head section. This contains metadata about the web page. The only thing the user would ever see is this title, and that's up in the tab on the browser. And you could do stuff like some people put search engine things in here, metadata about the page that tells what the page is and things like that. But we don't have to do that. If you want to do that, I'll show you how to do that. And then there's the body. We have, an, we have between the open body and closed body. Uh, just a side note, 90, about 99% of HTML tags have an opening. For example, this head opens and then there's a close tag. And the only difference between opening and close HTML tags is this forward slash right here. Okay. So you will have an open title and then a closed title. So first of all, let's let's change our title to something like Dave Tucker's web page. Since it's a title, we'll do a capital case. And then in the body, let's type something like Okay, let me I want to show you something real quick about web pages. So I'm going to bring this back into the picture. So this is my uh, faculty web page. If you right click on any web page, including this one, I'm in Chrome, by the way. I like to use Chrome. It tends to work well with other, um, with most web page features, but you don't have to use Chrome. I just started, I quit using the Microsoft browser 
I don't know, a couple of years ago I started using Chrome, but there's nothing wrong with the Microsoft browser. It's perfectly fine. But there's things like this, for example, right-click and view page source, which works, I like better in Chrome than the way um, uh, Microsoft Edge does it. So I hit the view page source, and you'll see this is all HTML. So this is stuff that I typed in, similar to what I'm doing now for your web page, to create my um, web page. If you look at something else, like let's look at CNN.com, like any web page at all, if you right click and view page, right click, view page source, you'll see this is what someone who's the web programmer for CNN did, um, typed all this stuff in, which is just crazy to look at all this stuff. Now, just so you know, they didn't sit there and type this. They used a web tool uh, to make this. Plus, as a side note, I have the browser shrunk down so it fits in the screen nicely. Um, and because of that, you're seeing you're seeing it all scrunched up. But they did use a tool. But nevertheless, every single web page on the Internet uses HTML or else it wouldn't work because that's the way browsers are designed to do it. So let me close these. Back down, we'll go to the assignment. Okay, so I've moved that off. Um, now for the tricky part. Um, what we need to do is, at this point, I think we should save our web page and get it up on the web server and make sure we know how to get the web server thing going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Windows Explorer. Okay, let me shrink this down into the window here. I'm just going to go to my desktop. And I'm going to make a new folder. Now your Windows Explorer might look a little different because you have, um, you might be running Windows 10. I'm running Windows 7 here. So on my desktop, I'm going to do a new folder. And I'm going to call that new folder um, web page. Okay, you can have spaces and not. It doesn't matter. Okay. And then I'm going to go into here, and this is where I'm going to... So I've made a directory to save my web page at. So let me shrink this down. So now I'm going to do File, Save As, and I'm going to go over to the um, desktop. And I'm going to find my web page folder. And here's the kicker. This is very, very important that students get confused with this. For some reason, down here it says .txt. I don't know why they default to that, but you don't want that. This is not a text file. It's an HTML file. So you need to do all files every time you save. And then I'd like you to make your first web page called index.html. Okay, so notice how it's I-N-D-E-X dot and then the extension. What the extensions are for in computers is tells the operating system what kind of file it is, and so it associates it with the program. So dot HTML is being associated with the Internet. So when you double-click on this file, it's going to try to open it up in a browser. Also, um, we're eventually going to put this on a web server, so when someone hits the web server anonymously, and I'm going to show you how to do that later, when they type in your URL, it will what we call serve up this page automatically. And because it's called index, you don't need to specify the exact page. Okay, just trust me here. Just index is like, like you walk into a restaurant and sit down. If you don't say anything, the server serves you the default meal of the day. Well, that's what this is, the default page of the day or default page period. So let me hit that. Let me save that. Okay. Okay, now for the tricky part. I'm going to go back into Windows Explorer. Now, Windows Explorer, like I said in the one email, is a really, really powerful tool if you use it. I know it seems simple. Um, over here on the left side of Windows Explorer, you'll see all like the things that I can see. My C drive. I apparently have some sort of DVD drive in there. And then these are my um, directories of an Edinburgh server. They're red X right now because the computer thinks it cannot see them, but actually I am VP'd in, in at the moment. 
Uh, I'm double check that. Yes, and I can actually see those if I was to click on it. But um, here's the kicker. Here's I'm going to leave this open, and I'm going to do an. I'm going to right click and do another instance of Windows Explorer. So now I have two instances of Windows Explorer open. Okay. On this one, I'm going to type in FTP colon slash slash web storage sto S-T-O-R-H-E, did I spell that right? Dot Edinburgh, dot edu. And hopefully when I hit enter, if we're lucky, it's going to prompt us to log in. in. Which it did, that's perfect. So my login, because I work there as dtucker, your login is going to be whatever you log into if you're on campus to the computer. And the same thing with the passwords, the same username and password. And then um, I'm going to hit the save the password for the heck of it. And I'm going to log, log on. Okay. Now, hopefully, if you get an error, if you typed in web storage correctly and get an error, that means they haven't set up your web directory account yet. Let me know if that happens. We'll talk to IT and we'll get that fixed. Okay. But you can still work on your web page while they're fixing that and get it going and all that. I just want to show you what, what we're doing right now is we're making the thing live on the Internet. Your, your thing here should be completely blank. The reason why I have all these files and directories is because I've been here for, I don't know, 18 years, I guess. And I have was used this for a, lot, for a lot of websites. I actually don't use this folder um, anymore, but I used to. So I'm going to um, make a new folder. Okay, you do that by right-clicking somewhere here, New Folder. Oh, of course, I can't do that. Okay, let's try that again. Right-click, New Folder. I just deleted the old one. And here I'm going to type in... Um, now, you, you actually won't do this part, but... I'm going to call it winter 2019, or again, you won't do this part. You're going to put yours um, right on the root of your webstores.edinburgh um, directory. I made this winter 2019 simply because I have all that other stuff, and I wanted this to look like what, what you would see. So now that I have this open, I'm going to shrink this down. I'm going to try to get this into the window so the YouTube can, can see both of these, basically, is what I'm trying to do here. Um, so I have an instance of Windows Explorer here, another instance here, right? And one thing I really like about this software is you can adjust these window sizes and things like that. Um, but I'm going to take this file and I'm simply going to drag it over here. I clicked it and dragged it and let go. And there it is. Now, believe it or not, this may seem strange, but the entire world can now see that web page that we just made because we just moved it simply by moving it into this folder. Um, it's now live for the world to see. All we got to do is tell the world our URL and they can see it. So let me pause for a moment. Okay, so to test it, um, what you would do, I'm going to bring the browser down here. I'm going to open up a new tab. And the URL is going to be users dot edinburgh dot edu forward slash and then um, mine's d tucker now yours will be your login forward slash a dt one two three four five six or so something something along those lines whatever your login name is whatever you use to log in hopefully they made a directory called that for you and then that's where you'd be now I made a folder called winter um, I think 2019. Right, winter 2001 time. Now, our web server is not case sensitive, but just in case, I'm going to do that. Now, I'm going to hit enter. And there it is. So, any, literally anyone in the world, of course, barring North Korea and countries like that that block the internet, um, they could type this in and this would come up. 
So what I tend to do is I, I like to leave this, this browser up. Like I, I'm going to take it and move it over to my other screen. In fact, just let me shrink it down here a little bit. I'm going to take it right off the screen here. But I'm going to leave it open. I'm going to go back to Notepad, and then we can make some changes here. Okay, so one of the things I wanted you to do was to make, um, oh, I mean do that. Make a title. Let me scroll this down a little bit. Oh, a title. A title that stands out on the top introducing your website. So let's do that real quick. So again, uh, we edit Notepad. So basically, this is my title right here. But to make it big and stand out, we're going to use what's called an H tag, an H1. I'm going to use an H1. Of course, I didn't type the H. I'm going to open the H1 tag, and then at the end, I'm going to close the H1. Okay. Now let's just take a look at this, just to show you how this whole thing goes. I'm, I'm going to save this. This saves it to uh, the desktop. Then I'm going to go back into my Windows Explorer, open these two, and now I'm going to re-drag this over. And... That's crazy. I'm going to yes to uh, overwrite it. Okay, and now let's, here's the browser. Let's refresh. And then see how it's bigger? Of course, it's wrapped because of the thing's doing that. Okay, so that's pretty simple there. So let me drag this off the screen again. Okay, so back to the assignment. Um, we did the title, at least two hyperlinks to favorite websites. Okay, so let me open up our editor again, which is Notepad right here. And how do you make a hyperlink? Um, basically, this is, I don't know if you knew this, but this is why the internet was invented at all. The guy wanted to make hyperlinks to research articles that related to his paper. A physicist and he wanted people just to be able to click on the link and get to it instead of having to go to the library and look it up and all this stuff so I'm gonna put CNN website here Oops. so it's a href a, a is for anchor href hypertext reference equals HTTP that's a HTTP protocol to load up a web page you don't need to know all that Let's see cnn.com ah, cnn the two forward slashes mean this is the root of the server you don't really need to know that either close quote close the anchor and then so that's what the links to now we have to have something to link against it have something for the user to see because inside these brackets here the user can't see in, in between the brackets if your web page is done correctly they can't see that so I'll put cnn web page and then um, we close the anchor. Okay, so let me save that. And let's FTP that over. Now, if, I don't know if you noticed, but for me, saving a notepad, sometimes I do file save. I typically do Control S for save. There's a lot of shortcuts, not a lot, there's a handful of shortcuts I use. I use Control S to save, Control F to find things. That works in every software. Control Z, X, C, Control Z, um, I'm sorry, Control X, C, V, Control X is cut, Control C is copy, and Control V is paste. I use those a lot. Um, you might be seeing that on the thing here. So let's see. I'm going to do this right here, a bulleted or numbered list of, uh, well, I'm going to make my links, um, I'm going to make my hyperlinks a bulleted list. Okay. So, yeah, I know I was going to save an FTP over, but let's, let's, let's work on the web page just a little bit more. So to make um, a, a bulleted list, you need to have something that's called an, an unordered list, a UL. And then afterwards, you need to, of course, close the UL. Okay, and spaces mean nothing. You can have all the spaces you want on your web page. The, the browser deletes them. 
if you saw what the browser saw, it just sees one big long string of text. So there's so I have an unordered list, and then I have an li that's short for line item, and then I'm going to close my line item. Okay, I'm going to do another line item. I'm going to pause right here. Okay, so I paused that and I typed in um, some more hyperlinks. Basically, to be honest with you, what I did, I'm going to show this real quick because I noticed I should be showing this. I just basically um, selected, um, once I typed a line item in, I, I did Control C and then I just copied it. And then I went in here and edited my hyperlink. So I made it really, really quick. Um, so I'm going to save this, Control S, save it, and I'm going to drag it over to my FTP site um, right here. So again, this is this is my desktop on the left. I typically put the local on the left, the remote on the right. That's pretty standard. I'm going to grab this and drag it over here. This is copying it from my computer here at my house. I'm in my house right now doing this. And it copies it up to the web server in the Edinburgh University server, which is in the basement of um, Ross Hall. So that's what I'm doing right now. And it's I want to overwrite that. So then let's drag the web page back down. And there's my links. OK. Um, let me pause here. By the way, you may want to like test the links. Like I didn't even test these things to make sure that they work. Um, Okay, so it seems to me they're all working okay. I'm going to drag this off and think what's the next thing we need to work on. Okay, so I have a hyperlinks to my favorite. Oh, an email link. Okay, let me work on that. Okay, I'm not going to put that in my bolded list. I'm going to put that um, right underneath my bolded list. A BR tag, by the way, short for break. That just puts a couple each. It's like hitting the enter key. So I'm gonna. It's like hitting the enter key a couple times. So I'm pushing down on my web page, just giving me some space. And then I'm gonna type in um, my my email hyperlink. So we have anchor hypertext reference equals. And then here's what's different: mail to colon and then in quotes dtucker at edinburgh.edu and then I like to to link to my email address that's in case people don't have email um, connected to their machine like if you use webmail all the time um, that way people can just copy and paste my email address and um, oops and in into their thing okay you'll see in a minute when I save it and copy it over so again um, I'm gonna put a little space I guess I don't need a space I'm gonna put space right there you can email me at ahrefmail2 oh no I don't want space there I don't want a space right here uh, that's about it. Let's take a look at that though. So I'm going to save. I'm going to FTP over. As you can see, I do this constantly to double check. That way you know if you did something wrong, exactly where it was it did it. And there's my thing. Now here's the kicker. So I, I don't have a webmail client installed on this machine. Info. So if I click on this right now, it's going to want to install Outlook and all this stuff. So I'm not going to click on it. But people can see my email address. And they could just copy and paste it if they wanted to. Or if they had a webmail or if they had email client installed on their machine, they could just click it and it would open up the client and you would keep going from there. Okay, so I went back over to the um, assignment. And um, let's put an image on our web page. Let's do that. 
Okay, an image, an image. I'm going to open up a new tab. I'm going to go to images.google and I'm going to type in Edinburgh University. I know that's boring, but um, I'm going to steal this picture right here, hopefully. And so, okay, so I clicked on this picture. How do you steal an image from the internet? By the way, we're not stealing. Because this is for a course, we're actually perfectly legal. Here we go, save image as. So what I did is I right-clicked, save image as. Okay, and it's thinking about it. And we have to double-check that this says JPEG. Sometimes when you save image as on these internet pages, they come up with some, something crazy. This should say a JPEG or a GIF or a PNG. If it's not one of those three, then don't do it. But this is, so I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to my webpage, right? And I have campus6.jpg. I'm gonna leave that name. That name is fine. Okay, campus6.h uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, .jpg. Okay, so I go back to my thing. And how do you do an image? I'm gonna put a couple more spaces. I'm gonna just simply copy these BRs, right? And right here, I'm going to do image. Whoops. Open the HTML tag, IMG. So it's image SRC for source equals, uh, I forgot what I called it. I called it, uh, whoops, campus6.jpg. Campus6.jpg. Okay, now here's the kicker. In front of this C, I have no direct. I don't. I don't have like C colon slash images. Oops. Okay, slash. Okay, I don't do have that. You don't want that. But the kicker is, you need to put this file up in the same directory that your web page is in. Okay. So I'm going to save this. Wait, I'm not done with that. Uh, I got to do one thing. I got to close that. This is one of the few tags that doesn't have a close. The IMG tag or the BR tag is also one of the very few. Okay, so I'm going to save this and I'm going to basically, this is called FTP by the way. In the background, it's running FTP. So I'm going to recopy the index over. I wish it would stop doing that. And now I'm going to drag this campus six over. So now I have two images. Okay. And I'm going to drag this where we can see it. Reload. Oh, by the way, sometimes you might have to do control F5. Control F5, there's a hard reload. And there's the image. Everything's working out good so far. Let me shrink this down and move it over off the screen here okay one of the things we want to do is a background color I'm not sure how to do that real quick it's really really simple in the body tag up here after the Y I'm gonna do a BG color BG color equals okay now here's the kicker I'm gonna bring our web page back in. I'm going to open up a new tab. And I'm going to do a color. Look for a color picker. Okay, I like Google. This is the Google built-in color picker. It's very nice. So you just pick some sort of color you want as a background. I don't know why, but I always pick these weird purple backgrounds. But now I have dark font, so I want a very light background. So I'm going to take my dot here and move it to a very light, this light purple. You know, I don't, let's, let's do a light blue instead of purple. I always do purple. This very, very light blue right here. Okay, this is the color right here. So I'm going to use the, um, the hex code. I'm going to copy this hex code right here. Highlight it, control C. Go back to our web page and I'm going to control V, paste in our hex code right there. Put that in quotes if you would, and you will see that now our web page has this um, web page. 
Oh, you know, I didn't make it dark enough. It's actually that new color. Let me pick a darker color. A more blue. There we go. Let me pick this, this, this very, very light blue, but a definite blue. Okay, I didn't like that. I'm going to go back to our editor. I'm going to repaste the color. Now, we could spend a whole lecture describing what these things are, but this, basically they're hexadecimal codes for uh, the different colors, how much red, how much green, and how much blue for two digits per each one. So I'm going to save this. i got to FTP it over. Maybe I forgot to FTP it over. Um, hit yes here. Let's take a look at it. There we go. And there's our nice background color. All right, I only have one more thing to show you, and then you have all the information you need to know to go ahead and make your own page and customize it um, to how you like it. I think it's this is one of my favorite topics. Of course, I, I, I teach this stuff uh, for the department. I teach the advanced web course and all kinds of web, the web engineering course and things like that. Um, but it's just such a useful skill to have. I mean, you might not think now, but maybe later on it will come in handy. Anyways, I'm going to add a link to a page that does not exist yet. So I'm typing ahref equals, and I'm just going to type in page2.html. Crazy. And then I'm going to write check out my page about Cambridge Springs, my hometown, PA. And close that anchor. Save it. So this goes nowhere at the moment. I haven't made this page yet. And notice how I didn't need all this, this rig and rolling because I'm already sitting in the folder. These are external. These leave your website. This is not leaving your website. This is simply going to another page in your website. So you don't want all this stuff. I guess you could technically have it. But you have to put in that users.edinburgh.edu, all that stuff. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to do File New. It's going to close this other page, unfortunately. But that's just what it does. And hold on, I'm going to pause here for a second. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy some HTML from my existing page. Um, so I was over on my other screen, but nothing nothing you don't know already. Okay, there's the HTML, the two head things. I typed in Cambridge Springs here. You don't even have to have this, but it's already in there, so I left it. We have an open body, and then I'm going to have a closed body. And we should have a close HTML here also. And then I'm just going to um, type in like an H1 tag. Okay, I'm going to close my H1. And this really um, is all you need to know to do stuff. You can make the bolded list. You can make different sizes. Grab a bunch of images. You can do the background color. Um, I'm just going to save this right here. Oops. No, so it did save as. It went to web page, which is where I've been working. That's why I did that. I hit Control S. Don't forget about this text document thing. It drives me bananas. I don't know why it does that. And I need to call it, if you remember, page2.html. That has to be exactly like that. And hit save. Okay, now I have the two pages. And here's my page two. I'm going to drag this over here. And that's it. Let's take a look at it. OK, I'm going to do a Control F5. OK, so notice my link didn't show up. So now I'm wondering what happened. So what I'm going to do is, whoops. I'm going to debug that issue real quick live here on the video recording. Oh, I should didn't do that. 
because I just want to drag this off screen a little bit. Okay, so what happened here? I need to file open uh, here. Now, the reason why nothing showed up here because look, it's filtering text files. There's no text documents in there. You got to show all files. And I'm going to go to index. Okay, so it's there. I bet I didn't FTP it over, did I? I thought I did, but maybe I didn't. So I'm going to recopy this over. Hit yes. I'm going to bring this back over and refresh. And there it is. There's my. I forgot to FTP it over. That's why it didn't show up. I'm actually glad I did that. Click this, and then there's my second page. So I've really introduced you to everything you need to know to finish the assignment. Let's take a quick look at the assignment here. Um, I'm going to drag the course web page back into focus here. And you'll see the assignment again is actually down here. And I have emailed me the URL, not the web page. It does me no good if you email me the HTML files. I can't even see them. I mean, I'll just see the text. I won't see what, what it's supposed to look like. Um, so a title, we did that. We did hyperlinks. We did email. We did a link to your other page. And then you can do the same thing to go back. Remember, you're going to link to index.html to go back to your home page from your second page. On uh, the bolded list, we did background colors. If you want to do background image, let me know. I can show you how to do that. It's really simple, but be careful. You need to have um, you need to have a proper background image. I mean, I, I should show you that real quick. I mean, they're they're really nice. Um, what I do, would do is images.google, and then I like to do background mm. patterns. And you can take this pattern, for example, here. You can right-click and um, save image as again. And uh, background. I'm just, I'm gonna. This is so long. I'm just gonna call it back one. And you save it. Oh, where did that? Did I say? Hopefully, I saved it to the. I didn't pay attention. No, sorry. It would be saved here. Yeah, there it is right there, back one. Okay, to get this um, image, let's put that on my second page, just for the heck of it. Uh, again, show all files. I'm going to open up page two. And I'm gonna buy I'm not gonna do BG color here like I did before. Let me do body background B A C K G R O U N D equals quote. Oh I forgot what I call it. I think I called it back one, but I'm not sure. Yep, back one. I do that all the time. I think it could remember for ten seconds. Body background equals back one. File save now you know what we need to do we need to FTP all this stuff up so I need so here's my here's my web server I need to get back one over and of course I made a change to the second page so I need to recopy page two over so let's take a look here and I drag the browser back in and there's a body background image. That's a decent background, it's kind of light, dark text stands out. But if you put an image of something, like it drives me bananas when students put the Pittsburgh Steeler logo in the background, you can't even read what they're saying because they choose this one that text is not meant to go over and it just overpowers everything. So background images you gotta be careful with. And they need to be um, repeatable. Like this background image is only this one little square here. But the way backgrounds work is they'll, they'll tile. They, they will tile and they will wrap automatically. And they're designed to merge together nicely so you don't even see the seams of the tile. But anyways, that's it. This is quite a long video. Normally I make a bunch of short ones. I'm hoping YouTube will let me upload this. Uh, let me know if you have any question, um, questions. Hopefully you're having fun this winter. Uh, and I'll communicate with you shortly.